time for our weekly uh, chat and channel update. And had a busy weekend, like I told you last week. We took a little break, and Saturday we went to uh, Bush Gardens for Halloween Scream for Micah's birthday. Micah's birthday is on Halloween, so we went a little early. And boy, was it crowded! It was so crowded. They closed the they closed the park to new um, people because it was at capacity. And when Bush Gardens is at capacity, that means there's 36,000 people in the park. You can't walk through it. You can't walk without bumping into somebody, and it's ridiculous. So anyway, we had a good time, but lesson learned. Don't go there for that. So <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, let's see. We're going to start off with our questions of the week, and the first thing I want to do is say thank you to Miss Patchwork, who sent me a wonderful recipe in regard to the, um, the stuffed shell recipe video that I did. She had a recipe for what she called jumbo stuffed shell fancies and it's this wonderful recipe for like a shrimp and crab salad that's stuffed into a cooked pasta shell and it looks really good so I'm definitely gonna put that on my list of recipes to do a video of in the future and uh, other questions several people asked me how much nutmeg goes into the filling of the stuffed shells because I neglected to do that on camera and I um, I, re I totally phased that and I apologize and um, but I grate my nutmeg fresh so I'm gonna say if you don't grate your own nutmeg I just grate like five grates or six grates um, in there so I'm gonna say an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon not a whole lot just enough every good Italian dish like that has a little bit of nutmeg in it and then um, here's another question this one is from one very happy bird and it was on the pumpkin pancake uh, video. Said I heard that pumpkin pan pu that pancake mix is almost identical to muffin mix. I wonder if it would be possible to make muffins with pancake mix. I don't know, but we'll have to investigate that and see what we come up with. Um, and then uh, our last question is from Angela Loves Tea, and she said. Um, I cook a lot using garlic and I also buy it in bulk. I put some of my garlic chopped in a glass jar and pour olive oil over it. I do not have a dehydrator but I'm looking into one soon. For now I cannot dry it to make it into powder. Any ideas if you can freeze it? Well I did a little research for you Angela and the answer is yes and no. I personally would not recommend freezing garlic because freezing garlic um, diminishes its cell structure and turns it into mush. What you're doing by chopping it, putting it in a jar of olive oil, and keeping it in the refrigerator is exactly the very best way, aside from dehydrating, to preserve your garlic for future use. Now, I will also place a caveat here. Anyone who does choose to chop their garlic, put it in a jar, and cover it with olive oil, please always keep it in the refrigerator. By keeping it at room temperature, you can run the risk of exposing yourself to botulism. Because for any of you who don't know this, botulism comes from the dirt. It's, botulism is a naturally occurring bacterium that is in all dirt. Botulism is not active until it is exposed to an anaerobic environment, which means an, um, an oxygen-free environment. So when you pour olive oil over garlic, you're exposing it to an oxygen-free environment because there is no oxygen in that oil. So keeping it at room temperature, you can really run the risk of making yourself very sick. So don't do that. Always keep it in the fridge. I mean, you could try freezing it, but I don't really think that it's going to be that successful because there's three things that are going to happen. Um, you're going to diminish the cell structure, your garlic is going to turn to mush, and the flavor is going to be severely diminished. So why do you want to do that if you want to go to all the trouble of doing it? I think that you're going to be very disappointed. So. There's the answer to that question. All right, the videos we saw this week were pumpkin pancakes, stuffed Italian shells, cream cheese frosting, and yesterday my, my latest video was the lavender and chamomile um, sugar scrub for the holidays are coming. In uh, the coming week, I have a few things I'm playing with right now, but I'm definitely going to be uploading a prepper's pantry chicken and gravy dinner. That'll go up tomorrow. Um, a quick pan chili. Uh, how to, I'm going to do a how to on that holiday planner and I may do some gift tags. Um, we're also going to do a bath tea and maybe a fizzing bath salts. I haven't decided. I'm, I have a few personal care items I still want to do for you because they're quick, they're easy, they're cheap. And uh, for all you ladies out there who have girlfriends and uh, 
other ladies in your family. These are really lovely gifts, and I'm hoping that you encourage them to use them because, it, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. You get a beautiful gift and you don't use it, you know, that's what it's made for. All right, moving on to more serious business. I got, uh, well, I was on Facebook uh, over the weekend, and my girlfriend from high school had posted this to her web, her, her Facebook page, and um, and I thought it was important. I actually emailed it immediately to my friend Cat's Cradle, and that it is was on the AccuWeather website. The title of the little blog entry was called "Peanut Shortage, uh, Peanut Problem Predicted After Summer's Poor Precipitation." So we're gonna have our little serious chat today about our food storage and how important it is to have our food storage in place because food storage is a hedge against inflation. So. Get your peanut butter now. Well, if you can still get it on sale at a real good price, you should buy some. Peanut butter is very good for your food storage, as long as you keep rotating it. If you buy it now, you're going to buy it at today's price, not at next year's price. Um, but the, uh, the article says, take a good look, good long look at that jar of peanut butter sitting on your kitchen table. It's going to have to last you a while. The United States has a peanut shortage this fall, and soon peanut butter prices will jump around 30%. That's a lot, folks. Drought was the main obstacle for peanut growers this year. Tiffany Arthur, an agricultural economist at the U.S. Department of Agriculture Farm Service Agency, said that in Texas, the air was so dry that irrigation water would evaporate before the water could reach the plants. The Texas peanut yield is down 17%. Though not as bad as Texas, dry weather affected farmers in the state with the nation's biggest peanut crop, and we all know that's Georgia. I've never seen a year wherein we suffered from planting time all the way through the growing season, said Hawkinsville, Georgia farmer Rodney Dawson. I've never experienced a season like this in 41 years. The dirt is just hard, really hard. It's like powder, no moisture at all. The La Nina is mostly to be blamed here, AccuWeather.com, agricultural meteorologists um, Dale Moeller said that southern tier of the country where peanuts are grown is typically dry during La Nina. La Nina stifles the storm track in the southern states. There isn't the normal progression of storms. Instead, high pressure systems kill off any moisture and storms. Worse, the bad news isn't over for the peanut farmers or peanut lovers. Um, with La Nina coming back this fall, we're expecting another dry winter and spring in the southern states, and that's more bad news for crops in the south, including peanuts. If summer rains don't materialize in 2012, that's two bad years in a row. Another part of the problem is that cotton prices were high around planting time, so farmers planted cotton instead of peanuts. Planted acres for peanuts went down by 11% this year, and the, la pardon me, the last time farmers planted so few acres of peanuts was in 2009. Before that, it's been nearly a hundred years since so few acres of peanuts were planted, and that was 1915. So that's just a heads up for you. Get some peanut butter into your food storage if you don't already have it in there. If you do have it in there, get a little more. I'm just saying. And this is a little short one this week. I'm not the long-winded uh, Nelly this week. So in closing, now last week I explained to you that I'm very emotional. Um, I also have a guilty pleasure that I like to um, indulge in, and that's reading out loud. So when I'm talking to you, and when I'm doing these videos, I'm really kind of in my zone. Um, so like I said, I was going to try and, and, and share with you some things that I really loved throughout my life, and I really think that they're special. And uh, earlier this week, um, I wanted to send my thoughts and prayers to my friend Bear Prepper, who put up a video earlier this week where she explained that a very dear friend of hers had passed away after a very long illness and then she had gotten better and everyone was thinking she was doing great and then she died suddenly. Um, our hearts and our thoughts and our prayers go out to you and, um, and that made me start to think, you know, um, sometimes we get really wrapped up in whatever we're doing. We're prepping, we're thinking about the future, what are we going to do, we're preparing for our future, we're, we're making sure we have what we need for then. And sometimes we forget that we need to live in the now. Um, not saying that you don't already, but sometimes we do tend to get wrapped up in um, the worrisome part of things like there's a peanut shortage coming or there's inflation is coming or there's going to be increased gas prices or what are we going to do if? Okay, let's not forget that the, the two letters in the middle of life are if. So we have to live 
uh, you know, in such a way that we don't get so consumed worrying about what might happen. And we have to make sure that we enjoy ourselves right now and surround ourselves with the things that we love and tell the people that we love that we love them and don't waste our time with petty crap. And, um, and I am getting to a point, I promise. But um, the, things, the things that I wrote in my notes here, it says sometimes it's easy to get wrapped up in this whole prepper thing and forget to have fun. Sometimes we forget that in our preparations, we need to give ourselves the opportunity to simply look up at the blue sky, envelop ourselves in the beauty of our gardens, and let ourselves be. Just let yourself be. It reminds me to have no regrets because when I get to the end of this road, I don't want to be in perfect shape. I want to be used up, and I want to say, what a ride. What a ride. So the following is a column that was written by Irma Bombeck, who is one of my all-time favorite satirists and also one of my all-time favorite editorialists. She had written several books throughout her life, and she was a regular housewife, and she rose to fame by writing uh, editorials for the newspaper. She had a regular column um, in, in the syndicated press, and she wrote several books and they were all based on what she knew from being a housewife and a mother and a working mom. And, and it was very funny. And, you, you know, she made you look at life in such a way that, gosh, you know what? Maybe what happened to you this morning when you dumped your coffee all over the kitchen floor, maybe that's not so bad if that's the only thing you had to worry about today. So um, this column was written by her right after she found out that she had been diagnosed with a terminal illness which eventually did take her life. Um, and the column is called, If I Had My Life to Live Over. And maybe some of you have, have heard this before, but I think it bears repeating. So, How If I Had My Life to Live Over by Irma Bombeck. If I had my life to live over, I would have talked less and listened more. I would have invited friends over to dinner, even if the carpet was stained and the sofa was faded. I would have eaten the popcorn in the good living room and worried much less about the dirt when someone wanted to light a fire in the fireplace. <coughs> I would have taken the time to listen to my grandfather ramble about his youth. I would have never insisted the car windows be rolled up on a summer day because my hair had just been teased and sprayed. I would have burned the pink candle sculpted like a rose before it melted in the storage. I would have sat on the lawn with my children and not worried about grass stains. I would have cried and laughed less while watching TV and more while watching life. I would have shared more of the responsibility carried by my husband. I would have gone to bed when I was sick instead of pretending the earth would go into a holding pattern if I weren't there for a day. I would never have bought anything just because it was practical, wouldn't show soil, or was guaranteed to last a lifetime. Instead of wishing away nine months of pregnancy, I'd have cherished every moment and realized that the wonderment growing inside me was the only chance in life to assist God in a miracle. When my kids kissed me impetuously, I would have never said, later, now get, get washed up for dinner. There would have been more I love yous, more I'm sorry's, but mostly given an other shot at life, I would seize every minute, look at it and really see it, live it and never give it back. I want you to think on those words this week, and I want you to live like that. Because how many of us, me included, you know, when my husband texts me in the middle of the day for no ungodly reason, I love you, and I text back, what did you do? What's wrong? Because I can't possibly imagine that he just wanted to say those words to me without having some ulterior motive. And... I think that we all need to change the way we look sometimes at how we approach a situation. So, um, Miss Bear Prepper, my heart goes out to you, and I'm very sorry about your friend. Know that she's in a better place, and, um, and she's always with you, and, and I know you already know that. But I think that we all need to be reminded in times of loss that we are only here for a blink of an eye, a nanosecond in the big universal scheme of things. And... Uh, and I think that we all need to live a little more like we believe that. So, that's all I have to say this week. I hope that 
you continue to be inspired by what I share with you. And if you have questions, if you have things you want me to try and do for you, please let me know, and I'll do the best I can to accommodate those requests. So, until next week, I'll see ya!